everybody! Today we're going to take a look at one of the most confused excuses for a teen comedy that I've ever seen. It's all about being yourself and joining the crowd and being original and copying others and how much fun it is to be a cheerleader, unless it's obviously not. That's right, this... You stop right there! Locky? As a man who never got to be a cheerleader, I will not stand idly by while you shit on this movie. You came all the way from Australia to prevent a movie review? I sensed something unpleasant was about to happen, and you're the biggest jerk I know, so I figured it was your doing. And my precognition was right! Hold on. You were never a cheerleader? No, we don't really have that sort of thing in Australia. Then what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> well, I bloody wanted to be a cheerleader, didn't I? I mean, we saw it all the time on television and in movies. It looked way better than rugby. It's like a celebration, mate, you know? I mean, not of physical prowess or athletic ability, but of strangers coming together for no other purpose but to have a good fucking time, eh? And oh man, to have been the guy responsible for all those people coming together and cheering somebody on. Man, that would have been a dream come true. Well, that's weird. You can go home now. I'm warning you, I did not take a 22-hour flight on the basis of a vague psychic impression just to sit here and watch you rip apart the best cheerleading movie ever made. What? This movie is crap! How dare you sign the name of Bring It On! Oh, for the love of ass. You want to defend the honor of Bring It On? Then fine. Do it. This is my weird-ass friend, Lachlan Danus, and this is Bring It On. From the very start, they depict the cheerleaders as sociopathic cunts. I'm sexy, I'm cute, I'm popular to boot. I'm bitchin', great hair, the boys all love to stare. I'm on it, I'm hot, I'm everything you're not. I'm pretty, I'm cool, I dominate the school. They're doing a cheer about how cool it is to be a cheerleader. That is fucking dumb. You're fucking dumb. Oh, they said bitchin'. I don't think you can say bitchin' at a high school pep rally. Who am I? Just guess. Guys wanna touch my chest. Um, this might be weird and all, but none of you were all that stacked. Dude, what? They're in high school. They're also arrogant shitheads. Who gives a fuck? I'm major. I roar. I swear I'm not a whore. Again, how is this appropriate? Would you stop whining every two seconds and watch the movie? Have you seen my show? Hate us cause we're beautiful, but we don't like you either. We're cheerleaders. We are cheerleaders. Oh good, they are the villains. This'll be interesting. They do some roll call thing that cheerleaders don't do because they don't cheer about themselves, but you don't care about most of them because they aren't really characters. I sizzle, I scorch. not for a sporting event, but so that a random cheerleader could announce that not only is she better than you and doesn't like you anyway, but now she's the new captain of the superiority club. That makes sense. Would you just fucking wait? Yeah! Oh my god! Nice rap! Oh, baby! That's right! Check out the hooters! See? It was a dream, so of course there can be dirty talk. It didn't really happen. That's why you watch before you complain. No, you're right. 
All those sociopathic megalomaniacal tendencies belong to one girl and not the whole squad. My mistake. She woke up because it was a nightmare? It only became a nightmare when she was vulnerable and exposed to the masses. As long as she and her crew were talking down to everyone, everything was fine. She's an ice queen, Locky, and I'm afraid that's that. So her boyfriend picks her up for school, even though he's more of a plot point than a character, and they give us some sly exposition. So are you excited? Oh, yeah! It's a college tour? I'm really stoked, you know? It's just, you know, I'm gonna miss you. Really? Your boyfriend is leaving for college while you're in a teen comedy. No, not really. Yeah, but next year, it'll be you and me reunited at Cal State Dominguez Hills. I'll be the experienced sophomore, you'll be the hot new freshman. Yep, it'll be just like high school, only better dorm rooms. Mm. Yeah, instead of making out in our bedrooms while our parents are away, we can make out on a bread box while my roommate watches instead of doing his trigonometry. Holy fuck, do they go to school with the Mushroom Kingdom? Remember, when you get captain, act surprised, okay? Don't jinx me. Yes, feed the monster's ego. She is not a bloody monster. Oh, Aaron, come to one last practice. You know you're still a favorite cheerleader. Oh, Please. I'm sorry, guys, I gotta run. You're not staying for the vote? Hey, I really gotta beat traffic. I can't be late for orientation. But I really Hey, hey. Mm, trust me. You're gonna get it. Oh, look who's all demanding and selfish about her boyfriend staying and witnessing her meaningless and guaranteed victory instead of being understanding about the fact that he has somewhere he has to be to further his actual life. If you squint, it kind of looks like a monster. And I know that your new captain will keep the tradition alive, leading you to the record six national cheerleading championship you know is yours. So. Let's meet your new leader, Torn Shipman. Okay, so not exactly a pep rally this time, but Torrance is the new captain. Yes, the dream was to show how anxious she was about it. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Shut up. Torrance goes to work right away, attempting to teach the squad how to do a wolf wall. What's a wolf swap? Only the hardest pyramid known to cheerleading and mankind. Good to know even the cheerleaders don't consider themselves men. That's not what that means! Anyway... They finally get their pyramid right, and then... Carver, can you cradle out? You bet I can! Okay, ready? One, two, down, up! Carver! Well, she was supposed to cradle out. Yeah, I heard that, and I don't know what it meant, but she didn't fucking do it, I can tell you that. She didn't do anything. She just suddenly screamed and threw herself on the ground. No. No? Let's look at that again. One, two, down, up. Either she threw herself at the ground, or she screamed because she saw it zooming up to punch her in the face. Look, it was just shorty editing. Oh! You don't say. I got Captain. Yeah, and you said to go to the hospital on your first day. Aye, aye, Captain. You were listening on the phone? Or he was at school that day. When kids get hurt at school, the students tend to hear about it. Well, he's younger than here, so he's probably not in high school. And that high school is an adobe fortress, so if they can't fit 7th and 8th grades in there, they have some serious structuring problems. Can we just watch the bloody movie? Yes, let's go full teen angst mode. Well, this blistering academic schedule shouldn't get in your way. You should be happy about that. Why can't you accept the fact that I'm not a genius? Oh, boy. If you studied half as much as you cheer, you'd be in great shape. Your priorities are... No, those are your priorities. Mine are just fine. Mother of Al, you actually like this shit? You know, mothers have killed to get their daughters on squads. That mother didn't kill anyone. She hired a hitman. Everyone, we have a new student transferring from Mission Hills High School in Los Angeles. Mission Hill? I love that show. Maybe this movie just got a lot better. Please welcome Cliff Pant One. In tone. Oh, never mind. It's the guy from Swim Fan. You actually thought a cartoon was going to show up? Yes, Lockie. I thought that. 
And what do you know, adorable new kid sits right next to Torrance, just when you thought there might be an original idea in this movie. Oh wait, no you didn't. You know, everyone's saying your ambition broke Carver's leg. When really it was the anklet which she slammed into the ground. You know, I agree it wasn't your fault since she threw herself at the ground, but maybe joking about her severe injury isn't a great tone to set for your run as captain. Oh, and speaking of being captain, it's time to choose Carver's replacement. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Oh good, a tryouts montage of comedically hopeless nobodies. Oh, stop, it's funny! Yeah, in the same way that watching a guy at work reenacting a family guy scene by butchering both the voices and the punchlines is funny. It seems embarrassing. Not funny. I guess it does. Well, we're gonna skip all that comedy and cut right to the arrival of our next main character. Her name is Missy, and for some reason, the cheerleaders detest her. Can she yell? We'll try and I'll do. Awesome! Oh, wow! Like, totally freak me out, I mean, right on! The tour, sure, are number one. I transferred from Los Angeles. Your school has no gymnastics team. This is a last resort. You've got to admit, that was classic. I admit no such thing. I will, however, admit that it seems to me if your school is the size of the Magic Kingdom, you should have a team for everything. Besides, is there nowhere else for her to join a gymnastics team? It has to be at her school? Okay, ignoring that goalpost shift. The team isn't amused, and they give Missy what for? Do it. Front handspring, step out, round off back handspring, step out, round off back handspring, full twisting layout. was a pretty impressive feat. Finally! That's what I would have said had she actually done what she were told. Sadly, she was told to start things off with a front handspring and instead chose to start things off with a cartwheel, failing instantly. You! She did! <laughs> Torrance decides that Missy is on the team, but Courtney and Whitney aren't happy. I'm sorry, but I'm overruling you. You are being a cheer tater, Torrance, and a pain in my ass! We already voted. Besides, Missy looks like an uber dyke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have at least one openly homosexual member of our panel right here beside us, in fact. And we're going to use homosexual slurs right in front of him to insult a complete stranger. We, <laughs> boy, do we have fun. Well, Missy storms off, likely equal parts offended and not wanting to hang out with bigots, but Torrance goes to her house to get her to reconsider. You. And you. Ah, masters of communication. Yes, hunky teeny lovey boy ye is Missy's brother. What a coincidence. What do you want? I want you on the squad. <laughs> You're the best. They know it. They just reject the unfamiliar. They're like cavemen. Or white people in Mississippi. Ever been to a cheerleading competition? Oh, you mean like a football game? No, not a game. Those are like practices for us. I'm talking about a tournament. ESPN cameras all around, hundreds of people in the crowds cheering. Here's the deal, Missy. We're the shit, the best. We have fun, we work hard, and we win national championships. I'm offering you a chance to be a part of that. Yes, offering, which I believe comes from the Greek meaning to beg. Count me in. Yes, in one minute and 12 seconds, we went from this. I mean, I plead temporary insanity. See, I'm a hardcore gymnast. No way jumping up and down screaming, go, team, go, is going to satisfy me. To this. Count me in. A girl of conviction, this one. Yeah, Torrance convinced her. Yeah, convinced her so hard that she goes to the next practice and immediately walks out. Nice recruit, Torrance. A real captain would have seen what I saw, a big, dikey loser. Oh, it's just going to be bigotry in place of a character, isn't it? Yeah, regardless, Torrance goes after Missy where she explains why she walked out. What the hell is up? I went out on a limb for you and you just bailed? I'm not about stealing. What are you talking about? You ripped off those cheers. See? 
There was a reason. Yes, yes, there was a reason. Missy then takes Torrance to L.A. to show her where the cheers came from. Of course, they may not get there for a while, seeing as how the Beatles' doors are unlocked, which means the car isn't going over 15 miles per hour. You really are a persnickety douchebag, aren't you? Lo and behold, the two arrive at another high school and see the local cheer squad doing the exact same cheer. With Torrance in shock, they head back to their car, but are stopped on the way. Hey! You guys enjoy the show? Ready to share those trophies? Can we just beat these buffies down so I can go home? I'm on curfew, girl. Then they could feel good about sending Raggedy Ann up here to jack us for our cheers. Raggedy Ann? Ugly redhead with a video camera permanently attached to her hand? Y'all been coming up here for years trying to steal our routines. And you've never done anything about it until now? You wait until the ugly redhead isn't recording you to come out and complain about it? Y'all been coming up here for years trying to steal our routines. And we just love seeing them on ESPN. What are you talking about? What in the fuckest of fucks do you think they're talking about? Do you remember where you are? Do you remember why you're there? Great Lincoln's mustache! That was a stupid fucking line. Ah, I think you might be. No! That question made no fucking sense! We've had the best squad around for years, but no one's been able to see what we can do. Oh, but you better believe all that's gonna change this year. I'm captain, and I guarantee you we will make it to nationals. Oh, good! 25 minutes in and the movie has a protagonist. What? Torrance is the protagonist! Are you fucking Daffy? Torrance is a power-hungry egomaniac who denies reality to serve her own selfish needs. That's a villain! What? This other chick, whose name I didn't quite catch, is standing up to the team that's been holding down and ripping off her squad for years. And she's doing so in a strong and triumphant way. She is the heroine. So just hand over the tape you made tonight. We'll call it even for now. <sighs> oh, bloody hell. Now what? They watch Red videotape them for years and do nothing. And then they stomp up on Torrance, who they did not see with a camera, and demand she hand over a videotape. I'm starting to see why this team isn't exactly full of winners. Our heroes then walk away, leaving the villains to scurry back home. Do you know what this means? My entire cheerleading career has been a lie. Well, I'm on the bright side. It's only cheerleading. I am only cheerleading. Oh, honey. Honey, that's so sad. Do you believe in curses? I'm starting to. This past summer, at cheer camp, all the new seniors had to do a dare. See, there's this thing called a spirit stick, and it can never, ever touch the ground. Come on, Shipman. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, and you better, is to capture the spirit stick and drop it in front of the entire camp. So it's a mission, not a dare. And she doesn't have to do it. It's totally a dare. Don't be all semantical. Okay, fine. It's a dare. And she doesn't have to do it. She does so. Well, what if she doesn't? Well, I don't fuck it. So, yeah, she walks up and drops the spirit stick, effectively cursing herself. Why did she do that again? It was a dare. So? You have to do a dare. Ah, yes, I forgot the movie's main theme of fall in line like a good little minion. That is not the theme. Then why would Torrance obey when Red ordered her to curse herself? And why the fuck would she do that anyway? What does the squad gain from having a member under a cheerleader curse? And if she's cursed, how is she overwhelmingly voted captain? And what does Red being a routine thief have to do with being cursed? A major truth was revealed to her. How is that bad? Would you just let me enjoy my movie? No. Anyway, Torrance informs her team about Red's years of thievery. I put this to the entire squad. Swear you guys didn't know. We can't go to regionals with a stolen routine. It's too risky. Except for all those times it apparently led us to victory with zero negative effects. But hey, being the villains... I don't give a shit. We learned that routine fair and square. Except for the stealing part. Don't punish the squad for Big Red's mistake. This isn't about cheating. This is about winning. Ah, there's the old Toro spirit. 
What's their school motto again? Ah, yes. Fuck the poor. We're rich kids and we want things. Torrance tries to call her boyfriend for advice, but he's never available since going to college, and we get another scene featuring Jim Brewer's stillborn demon spawn. It's not my fault you're in love with a big gay cheerleader who won't return your phone calls. Thankfully, Torrance is as tired of gay cheerleader jokes as I am and unplugs her brother's controller so hard the game in the console ceases to exist. Speaking of gay cheerleaders, remember when I said there was an openly gay cheerleader? Well, it doesn't much matter, but his name is Les, and he's currently driving our main characters to a football game. What is your sexuality? Well, Jan's straight. Well, I'm... controversial. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me you speak fat? Remember that time that one straight girl got mad and stormed away because some other straight girl called her a dyke? I do, and I seem to remember it being you. How about you pull a 180 now and call an actual gay guy a fag, you dumb cunt? Uh, yeah, that is kind of weird. Are you trying to tell me you speak fag? Oh, fluently. I get it, I get it. Using homosexual slurs towards straight people is a major fucking offense, but using said language against actual gay people is cute. What the fuck, movie? So it's game time, and the stands are filled for a team that never wins. Yes, the entire point of the football team is that they are the most incompetent football team in the history of the universe. That's their only joke. Anyway, this whole scene is all a bunch of filler until a cheer comes along that most of the cheerleaders aren't really all that into, during which Cliff takes a moment to smile at Torrance. Which, apparently, is bad. You're like totally his eye candy. God, I can't believe you'd do that to Aaron. Do what? Especially with him. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, don't play dumb. We're better at it than you. <sighs> You're having cheer sex with him. Ah, uh, uh, what now? Fucking cheer sex, Locky. Yeah, they saw him smiling at it. Uh, yeah, a guy in the crowd, the crowd that loves the cheerleaders more than the football team, the crowd that is into the cheerleaders even when this guy himself is not, smiled at Torrance. And they called it... I don't even want to say it again. Chia sex? Ah, it's so stupid. But at least Torrance had the same reaction to it that my soul did. You haven't chia sex with him. Right on the play. It's called against... Anyway, four of the girls from the Clover Squad show up to crash the Toro's fun. We're the best, our team's too cool, we got the class to rock this school. Aww, yeah! We bad, we got the team, we can't be had. We're the best, so score them points, you win the game, we'll rock this joint. Go Toros, go Toros, go, go, go Toros, go Toros, go Toros, go, go, go Toros. Try to sell our bit, but you look like shit, but we're the ones who are down with it. They drove all that way to walk in for 30 seconds and tell them that they suck? Uh. Yeah? I mean, it worked. After the game, Torrance is staying tonight at Missy's house and we catch up with them getting ready for bed. In the morning, Torrance finally gets a hold of her boyfriend, who basically tells her the plot doesn't matter. Miss Red snaked our routines from the East Compton Clovers. All of our routines. You gotta calm down. This is not that big a deal. Everybody uses everybody else's material. It's like this unwritten rule or something. Thanks for showing up, Aaron. You really moved things along. We can't do their routine at regionals because they're gonna do their routine at regionals. Come on, Tor. You need a new routine. That's all. No problem. In other words, 
All the characters with passion in this movie are drama queens getting worked up over bullshit. I wonder why they didn't put that in the trailer. Just hire a professional choreographer. A choreographer. Look, just think of it as collaboration. The UCA totally looks the other way. Except they don't, and you both know that, but whatever, fuck the rules! You're already stealing one routine, why not buy a routine from a militant freak? I take you to be the captain, which means you'll probably need more work than anyone. Look, you don't- Shh, 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 shh. but- I... No, no, no. Don't speak. Don't think. Listen and learn. I feel like this movie thinks that cheerleading is funny. Well, not cheerleading itself, but caring about cheerleading. What do you mean? It is funny. No, there are jokes and one-liners in the movie that do make me chuckle. I am a choreographer. That's what I do. You are cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are dancers who have gone retarded. Okay, you see that right there? That was funny. But that's not what I'm talking about. You see, every character in this movie seems to care about what they're doing. We even have this militant cheermeister who shows up, treating everything like some kind of life and death serious art. And that seems to be the real joke. It's not a movie about cheerleaders or cheerleading. It's a movie built around the idea that it's okay to make fun of taking this stuff seriously. It ends up looking more like a mockery of cheerleading, and that sucks away the fun because that's just mean. Well, I thought you made fun of cheerleaders. I do make fun of cheerleaders, but I'm also not going to spend millions of dollars to shit on someone's preferred pastime. Obviously, guys like me were not the target audience. Cynical clackers? Sure. But I'd wager you could make a good movie out of competitive cheerleading. I'd say you could make a good movie out of just about anything if you put thought into it instead of just a slathering of lazy cliches and spite. Oh, so the protagonist of the baddies, everything's cliche, and the movie's actually a prank on its target audience. It seems that way, yes. Anyway, after their choreography montage thing, there's a love connection scene between Cliff and Torrance that actually works really well, until the interrupted kiss cliché. And then we go off to state regionals. Oh no, look who's here. It's those people we knew would be here, oh no! The Clovers go out and do their routine, which I'm sure is great, or something, and the Toros suddenly see another squad doing the exact same routine they bought from their choreographer. It's Dora routine! That we paid some guy to make for us, which is against the rules. That's totally unfair! It's the curse. What? The spirit stick curse. No, this is not a spirit stick curse. This is you cheated and didn't bother checking your dealer's history. This is not black magic. This is you suck as a leader. Naturally, the Toros are the very next squad, and instead of throwing in the towel, they humiliate themselves by doing the exact same routine and outing themselves as blatant cheaters. Torrance Shipman? Yes? Ted Freeman Universal Cheer Association, we have a problem. This script? Oh, fuck off. Does the name Sparky Palastri mean anything to you? Sparky Palastri? Mm -hmm. Apparently he's been peddling the same routine up and down the California coast. Six squads total. But since there's no precedent for this, there is nothing in the rule books that forbids it. It's simply frowned upon, and I suppose we can't disqualify you on those grounds alone. See? It wasn't against the rules, you wacker. Well, shave my face and slap my ass. It's not actually against the rules. It's just something the rule makers don't want you to do. As defending champions, you are guaranteed a bid to Florida, but know that we'll be watching you. And they actually get a free pass to the next level of competition anyway, making this entire segment of the movie completely moot. Clearly, I'm the idiot here. What are you doing? You're wrecking everything I built. Hey, hey, hey it's not totally her fault. I was the one that hooked this up. Should, this season should have been gravy, okay? I, I handpicked a squad, I delivered an idiot-proof routine, like, ladder, nationals, hello! Um, hi, Red. You know that routine you delivered? Well, the team that made it up is here and already used it. So, you're mad because the Toros embarrassed themselves by duplicating the routine from the wrong people? Also, you graduated high school. Why do you care? Look, the truth is, I was a real leader, okay? I did what I had to do to win a Nationals, and ever since I handed the reins over to you, you've run my squad straight into the ground. Yeah, don't buy routines, Torrance. You steal them, duh! If I made any mistake as a squad leader, it wasn't borrowing cheers. It was announcing you as my successor. That, 
and not learning the difference between borrowing and stealing. And again, she seems to be upset because the Tauros didn't use the routine that she stole from the Clovers, even though the Clovers just did that routine, so they still would have been humiliated for duplicating someone else's routine. What the fuck is her argument for superiority? And they still get a free pass to the next competition because they're defending champs, so why are people fucking upset? I hate to see you like this, all stressed out. It's not good for you. Maybe you're just not captain material, and there's nothing wrong with that. You want me to give up captain? Hey, let them deal with the politics. You just do what you do best, Tor. You cheer. First of all, this human ventriloquist dummy is a terrible boyfriend. Secondly, politics? What politics are involved in cheerleading? Ah, uh, you know. Pressure from the other squad members on the captain's decision making and keeping everybody happy. You mean like earlier? Courtney, this is not a democracy, it's a cheerocracy. I'm sorry, but I'm overruling you. So, the politics of a megalomaniac. How could I have missed that? Anyway, Erin takes her home and kisses her goodnight, but Click was at her front door and saw it happen. Friend of yours? <sighs> He's my boyfriend. <sighs> but Cliff, I can explain. No, it's cool. Here, um, I made you tape too. Cliff! I get where he's coming from, though. If she's gonna be all flirty and stuff, she could have said, hey, I have a boyfriend. Her? He was the one being all flirtatious, what with his cocky attitude and his smooth talk. She almost kissed him. No. He almost kissed her after laying on the seduction. You're right. All the romantic movement has been on his part. Thank you. So he's not heartbroken. He's just bummed out because he's not getting laid. Yeah, what? And after all that work? I hate you. The next day, Tweedledee and Thing 2 coyly assume control of the squad. We've already decided on a course of action. We're going to forego nationals this year. Everyone's already agreed to it. Uh, except me. And me. Both of you can be replaced. So, the girl who joined the squad as a last resort and conformed to cheerleaderhood is now one of only two people who hasn't conformed to giving up on the one thing she didn't want to do in the first place. Right? Yes. Good. Our whole cheering career, we've staked our reputation on being the best. The most inventive. Now we finally have a chance to truly be original, and you're all running scared. Well, yeah. I mean, Red was the one who invented all those previous routines, and she's no longer there to lie and steal them to victory. These aren't creative people, they're easily manipulated followers. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be hard work. We'll need a new routine, something amazing and fresh, and we've got less than three weeks till nationals. But if we can do it, if we can pull this off, then we can really call ourselves original. Now who's with me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I rest my case. We're gonna devote every waking hour to practice. Before school, in between classes, and after school. Including the past, like when Carver broke her leg in this scene from earlier in the film. And since the football team sucks, no matter how hard we cheer, we'll use night games to practice too. Wait a minute. Now what? When did she say the Nationals competition was? Nationals are February 10th. So? So, it's the middle of January. How the shit would their football team have games in the middle of January? Post? Season? Their team is a bunch of loser halfwits. They would never make it to postseason. They barely make it onto the field. Well, how about you bloody nitpick about it? This is nitpicking? It's a movie about high school shit. They should know how high school works. Anyway, after some montaging, Torres goes to find Aaron at his dorm room and discovers another girl in his bed. You're a great cheerleader, Aaron. It's just that maybe you're not exactly boyfriend material. Bye bye and Torrance's true self, that of a selfish monster that thrives on fear and hate, shines through in a glimmer of truth. Oh, do bloody expand, eh? Um, 
It's okay for her to get all googly-eyed at Cliff, but she dumps Aaron right away for banging other chicks? No, she dumped Aaron for not believing in her leadership skills. Oh, right, he offended her megalomania. Bad move, Aaron. Apparently, seeing other dames on the side is one thing, but you gently tell a shitty leader that she might be a shitty leader, and that is the last straw. Besides, the larger point here is that she's all Twitter-painted with Cliff while officially dating Aaron, and then tells Aaron that he's not boyfriend material. Maybe you're not girlfriend material, you hypocritical self-serving slut! Oh, give me a break there. Cliff is played by Jesse Bradford, and I implore you to show me one picture of Jesse Bradford in which he's not just the cutest little thing ever. It is not Torrance's fault that she wants to jump his bones. UCA just posted the Nationals list on the internet. East Compton isn't on it. They couldn't raise the money in time. They're not going. What do you mean they're not going? Torrance, that's good news. They cannot not go. That's not good news. What are you talking about? They don't go. We win. Once again, we're the best. I define best as competing against the best there is out there and beating them. They have to go. No! I didn't do all this planning and hard work for nothing! The poor kids must go to the competition so that we, the wealthy, may crush them! We then come upon the heroes of the film as they're writing a letter to a talk show host asking for the money to get into the competition. Because that's plan A. Where we come from, cheer is not a word we hear very often. They should call us inspiration leaders instead. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, that's a bit dodgy. I don't know why we write into some talk show host. It's like we're begging for charity or something. It's not charity. Paula the patents from our neighborhood. She'll understand why we need the money. Yes, but it is charity because you need the money. Apparently, high schools have just stopped teaching words to their students regardless of financial class. Torrance walks in on their letter writing. You know, why were they in the gym to write a letter anyway? And right in the center, too. What the f- Would you bloody move on? Whatever. Torrance interrupts them because she can just do that on a whim. You guys have to go to nationals. Did you come up here just to tell me that? Here. I got my dad's company to sponsor you guys. <laughs> what is this, hush money? No. Oh, right, it's guilt money. You pay our way in and you sleep better at night knowing how your whole world is based on one big old fat lie. No foolish underdog. With this money, I guarantee your entrance into the competition wherein my cohort and I will defeat you with a show of tumbling and pep, the likes of which the world has never seen. Torrance is not the villain. Well, you know what? We don't need you. Um, yes, you do. I'm trying to be strong for my squad, okay? That's what a captain does. A captain tears up the check that secures that you and your squad get to go where you deserve? Obviously, she's showing independence and leadership. But they can't afford to go, so they're kind of not independent. Which means she just fucked her squad. Which strikes me as terrible leadership. It's the principle. What principle? Why would you not use the money offered to you by the squad that's been ripping you off for years? They are literally paying you back. In, in fact, that seems like a remarkably fair trade. They should pay your entry fee for every year that they've ripped you off. But... Okay, yeah, that seems fair. And what about the people in her dad's company who got excited about sponsoring the Clovers? Their dreams are dashed. I will fucking slap you. Oddly enough, the talk show host, an unimaginative Oprah riff, sends a camera crew to the Clovers gym and awards them their entry fee. That is literally the first and last of the talk show. Why the fuck did that happen? We finally get to the competition and they show us snippets of the preliminaries, but none of it matters because the only two squads in this movie are the ones that go to the finals. Imagine that! At the finals, the Clovers are up first, tumbling across the mat and into each other. Was, uh... Was that part of the routine? Probably not. Smacking face first into each other? Not a, uh, not a classic cheerleading maneuver? Don't be a dick. Yeah, I just figured that a great movie about cheerleading would make sure that their squads knew what they were doing. 
Naturally, the movie ignores this fuck up and the Clovers get a huge reception. Afterward, the Toros get their turn and it's full of flyovers and basket tosses. Both are illegal maneuvers that disqualify squads in high school cheerleading competitions, but high school cheerleading competitions also don't allow music and require actually cheering during their routine, so who cares about authentic representation? Oh, would you stop nitpicking? That's not nitpicking. It's time to see who won. In second place, from San Diego, California, the Rancho Corte Toros! Second place, hell yeah! My character was all about winning at any cost and completely disregarding the moral ambiguities of achieving said victory. But, fuck it. I'm okay now with falling short of my shallow dream. Hell yeah! And now the winners of this year's National High School Cheerleading Championships. Will it be the only other team with speaking roles? Please come to Clover, please come to California! I knew it! I could feel it in my bones! So, second place? How's it feel? Feels like first. Well, that's just stupid. They kiss and the credits play us out with a rendition of Hey Mickey. But now that we've finished the movie, is it really worth the watch? Of course it is! You're absolutely right, Locky. Ah, but you- I am? Heck yeah! I am sure it's got a lot of lazy plot cliches. A lot of lazy plot cliches, but they come so many and so fast you don't really notice them. And the ones that you do notice are really gone before they can do any major damage. Oh. I mean, I knew that. I just thought you hated this movie. What? No way! I mean, the acting is great, the dialogue is pretty fluid, there are a lot of good scenes minus the kind of ignorant finals routines. In fact, I'd kind of have to say that the flaws in this movie are pretty much completely forgivable because it's really well paced and just a lot of fun to watch. Well, what the fuck, you caught goblin? If you like it so damn much, why were you roasting it? Nah, I was only teasing it. Besides, I had to talk about this movie because it has four sequels. Listen, when I said I defend the name of Bring It On, I can only assume you meant the entire franchise. Oh, damn it, Ted. Why did you bloody buy those?